So the ERI course and just everything that the Equal Rights Institute does has been so impactful for me in actually framing the abortion discussion in a positive way that people can see like what we're really trying to talk about and that human life is inherently valuable and that we're not trying to kind of put up walls and make other people's lives harder. And I've had so many people after I've taken this course say, wow, I've never heard the pro-life position framed in that way. And you can see the little gears turning in their head and even if they don't change their mind on the spot, they, they have a much better view of the position and they've actually considered what I had to say. And a lot of them said they never even heard it before that one. I think honestly the most powerful thing for me was just the first couple of modules talking about like active listening and letting people say what they need to say and just, I don't know, it's just that empathy piece is so important and I've heard the arguments before um, about like, oh, like try to a toddler, but I've never had that foundational piece and that's so like transformative to like any discussion, dialogue you're going to have just from reframing from debate to dialogue is so powerful. Yeah, just like I agree with what Nina said, that like um, the ERI course really taught me that it's not about like, you know, spitting out the facts and trying to like make your opponent look like an idiot. It's about he like hearing them and responding to what they're actually saying, not just s spitting out your talking points as fast as you can. And, um, you know, it's made me a better active listener, not only in the abortion debate, but like in general. It's made me a lot better at debating people and like trying to actually change people's minds rather than just, you know, saying my mind. I like Equal Rights Institute a lot, um, mostly because I enjoy having productive conversations. A lot of times what I've noticed, especially like on the internet, um, is productive conversations are kind of like a, uh, what do they call diamond in the rough, I'm going to quote Aladdin. But the way that ERI kind of approaches things, especially with like their seeking more information, asking questions, things like that, they've targeted it to a point where abortion conversations can be productive. Um, and for me, a lot of my online content can possibly be combative, but they've actually helped me out kind of narrowing my focus, aiming for productive conversations. And also, it helps because they read all the books that I don't have time to read. And so I can go on to their thing about fetal personhood and all that stuff and know what I'm talking about using them as like a, uh, you know, like a, like a Wikipedia for pro-life people. Pro-life wiki. One of the best ways that we can change the culture, change things to aim in a more pro-life direction is to have, have good conversations with people. Um, and here I trained you to do that. And it, I know it's helped me a lot. Um, even though, I mean, I was pretty good at it before. But they've made me better. We at Oregon Right to Life absolutely love everything the Equal Rights Institute does. I would definitely say that they're one of our top partners in the movement. Whenever we have pro-lifers doing weird things, I love that I can just go to the website, get a link for, to one of their blog posts, and copy and paste, and I know that it's going to be comprehensible information for people that may not necessarily want it, and I've definitely had really good feedback from people that have gotten the blog post from me, say on our Facebook page, and said, this really helped, thanks a lot. So I know that not only in my day-to-day -day life managing our social media, but also at our conferences, we brought Josh and the team back. We always get rave reviews and great reception because his workshops are really engaging, they're interesting to be a part of, and then also you come away with a lot of information. Um. In terms of apologetics, their resources are fantastic, mm. especially the, um, the Four Seasons of Autumn. I've used that argument and that particular thought process um, um, and th those particular apologetics um, arguments in so many discussions and it's brought people a lot around, especially my colleagues in the medical community, because they can appreciate the influence of morality and the science and how they come together um, at that crossroads. So it's been very, very helpful. Thank you so much for all your resources. For hitting all these issues from a secular um, secular standpoint it's been very very helpful and the way you guys weave the medicine the ethics is just phenomenal thank you so much greetings from Australia g'day mate thanks a lot <laughs> cheers guys so my name is Emma Dooley I'm with Spook Scotland Society of Protection of Unborn Children and Director of Education and Outreach last year I gave 168 presentations in schools across Scotland and like what Equal Rights have given us is unbelievable. It has helped us propose and not impose this message to students, winning hearts and minds. Uh, it's, it's, it's amazing. It's transformed our ministry. I'm just so grateful to Josh and all the guys there. Uh, thank you again. 
from Scotland and I'm here with Spock uh, Scotland. I'm a university student, I'm head of Strathclyde Students for Life. Um, Equal Rights Institute's helped me because it's given me so many arguments, it's given me so many new ideas to bring to my university and just give people in Glasgow a good outreach to pro-life work. I have gained a lot of new insights to just the particularities of our language as we have dialogue about abortion and about really you can permeate all of these tips to all aspects of your life. Um, so it like helps in conversations with my parents about when I should come home and stuff, which is silly, but like dialogue is such an essential skill and it's so important that we know how to do it well. So I thank Josh and Equal Rights Institute for teaching me how to do that in a more holistic way to reach as many hearts and minds as possible. Thanks. Your tools have been so helpful for me because I have a ton of friends who are still in the mindset of like, boo, you are killing people. You can't be a real Christian if, and they're just all blood and anger right now. And I just keep saying, go to Josh Brown, go see Josh Brown's videos. Go watch his stuff, because that's how we're going to reach people, by being compassionate. They don't care how much we know, they care, They want to know how much we care. And if we can transition them easily, and if we can get them to understand our ideas, then their minds will be changed, and that's what we're going for. We need people's minds to be changed, not just to harp on them about what they're doing wrong. And that is Christ's real message of love and compassion and reaching out to the oppressed. Just the idea that we can have these genuine dialogues and the transition was really huge for me. So I learned about Trot Out the Toddler and I learned about pro -like Apologetics. But when you were talking about that transition, like, like we're just coming out of left field with Trot Out the Toddler and it makes perfect sense to us, but it's not going to make any sense to anybody we talk to. But then if we can transition, and I love your like, okay, I have this weird idea, but just stick with me. You can just stick with me. Like, I love that, because that bridges the gap. And I love that you come to people in compassion and friendship. And like, that's exactly how we need to be reaching people. The Equal Rights Institute has helped to give me the tools to be confident to speak about the issue of life, to be convincing, persuasive, but always gracious. And this has given people the confidence to step into the movement in a meaningful way and really affect change in our local community concerning abortion. I think the biggest thing is that it's like the more holistic teaching you how to have a productive dialogue with someone. Being trained how to think what the other person might be thinking in their head so that I can more readily understand what they're trying to say or like maybe even help it even helps me like empathize with them and like try to be more open-minded about other ways of thinking that I might not have experienced before. I'm Director of Youth Development for SPUC Scotland uh, so my job really is working with young people mostly and training them as well so what you guys say is training pro-lifers to be less weird that's pretty much my job. Um, I run a street outreach initiative called Project Truth. So the Equal Rights Institute has really, really helped me to help train others to have better pro-life dialogues and how to just kind of reach people's hearts and minds just doing it properly and having really good conversations. So it's really been invaluable to the, the way that I train the other young people uh, to have good conversations. I'm the Youth and Education Officer for the Society for the Protection of Unborn Children in Scotland and I've been working doing outreach with them since I was 18. Um, Equal Rights Institute has given me a lot of materials that I can look into and use in my dialoguing on the streets and also being employed by SPUC. Um, when I did get employed they uh, made me sit down and watch <laughs> all the Josh Brown videos on the Equal Rights Institute website. So it's really, really helped me in everything that I do um, in speaking to people and uh, converting hearts and minds to the pro-life position. ERI has been a big part of our club for the last year or two. We often watch your guys' videos in our meetings and it's just a really good way for us to uh, be equipped to have good conversations and not only have answers to people who are asking us but also just know how to talk to people with whom we disagree and have constructive dialogue. Uh, we had a table earlier this year that Tim helped us uh, with last year where, yeah, should abortion remain legal with yes, no, or it depends. And uh, we made sure to get some refreshers on the videos from the course right before we did that. And everybody felt comfortable to talk with whoever approached us. Confidence is a really big thing. Uh, more people are willing to come and table and talk with strangers and just have good conversations. Last year, um, I took a group of students from the Dallas area 
and um, every night um, after our experience we would um, sit down and we would ask them how the day went, what, was, what were the things that struck them, what were the things they're going to take home. And after the Students for Life conference last year, uh, we went and took a, a, a quick monument tour um, at night and um, it was freezing cold and raining um, and they all came back freezing and shivering, um, still enjoying the, the tour. But what they had to say when we asked them about the day was that guy in the advanced apologetics course, he was amazing. And that's what I'm going to bring back to my school. For me, it's helped me to have more confidence in like how I explain my argument to like my peers, my friends who I know are kind of like on the border, but they don't really have like a good enough reason to for sure be pro-life. So that's how it's helped me. To not have uh, baby tunnel vision when and, and really be compassionate towards the woman. Yeah. Help me learn not to be super abrasive, which is something <laughs> I've been criticized for. That's fantastic. So I was introduced to ERI, I took the online course and found it fantastic, but first I listened to a blog post on the relational apologetics. So I thought that the talking points were so fantastic, I put them on signs. So my 10th grade theology students now know that when they disagree, they're welcome to do so, but they have to first find common ground, they have to repeat arguments, they have to show genuine intellectual curiosity so that they can really understand where the other person is coming from and relate to them on a one-on-one -on -one level. So we've been having a lot of fun with it. There are lots of different moral issues that come up in our classroom debates. So I've been a part of the pro-life movement for a long time and the, probably the most frustrating experience I've had was working against a bubble law in San Francisco. And the legislator looked at me when we were having this conversation and said, can you stop the man who stands outside of the abortion clinic shouting at the women inside? And I said, well, I can try. So I called him. And he said, this is what I'm called to do, to scream at these women to let them know what they're doing. And I was crushed to return to the legislator and say, no, I can't stop and him from doing what he's doing. And he said, then I'm going to proceed with this bubble law. So for me, changing the conversation and allowing us to interact on a level that is so much more human than the attack first and defend my position mode has really helped to bring hope to a very frustrated position within the pro-life movement, to say that there is hope and connection beyond disagreement within the movement.